So it's not always that we get to go camping where we have access to showers and potties and well-groomed campsites, but when we do, it's with mom. Might I add that mom is the only person that I know that goes camping with a tablecloth. Still a dog. Still a dog. Check out the fire pit though, huh? This is a nice little elevated fire pit. They got very well-groomed tent sites. This mom's got her tent all set up. Nice and neat. Pretty sweet. Check this out. She's got a full on bed set up in there. How cool is that? You know, I don't blame you though, because after getting up and down off of the floor in an air mattress, I'm telling you, it could be a pain in the ass. I'm too old for that. <laughs> she says she's too old for that. Now after keep in mind. squats, I cannot do that. Yeah, keep in mind now, she does CrossFit, what, daily? Yes. <laughs> daily. Every and what was the last thing, the last major accomplishment in CrossFit that you made? A 265-pound deadlift. 265-pound deadlift. That means my mom could deadlift me. That's crazy. Only do we get tablecloths. We get citronella candles. But check out these steaks. And asparagus. And, and mushrooms. Where's the bacon? Because I know there was bacon too. Yep. Right there. Bacon. So here's the play on this. We're going to bacon wrap these mushrooms no, and bacon. these asparagus. Yeah, and. and we're going to add cheese to those mushrooms right there. And then we're going to cook this on that. And we finna get fat. My mom just said this is this is what? There, this no is carbs. very healthy. There is no carbs in this. She says this is so no carbs. So no carbs. we're good. We're ready to roll. This is all keto friendly. By the way, if you haven't yet, you need to try out pork skins with pimento cheese. Yes, it is good. Off the chain. Had it. It's, it's good. Try it out. You overlanders out there think you're prepared? Let me tell you something. <laughs> My mom bull. pulled up in a <laughs> Kia. <laughs> no roof racks, no bull bars, no skid plates, no fridges, no bull. She pulled up in a Kia, brought all this with her, and a tablecloth, and we about to eat right. <laughs> so I must say, I'm relatively impressed with the fire capabilities of both mom and I because we're not fire people. Now, granted, we were saved by her fire starter, which mom brings up a valid point. That's starting a fire. That's what that is. But check out these coals we have. These coals are pretty, man. We're fixing to put these right up underneath here. This is going to make for a pretty good little uh, meal tonight. So I'm pretty stoked about it. Oh, flippity floppity steak. It ain't no bad, though. <laughs> a little nugget. Mm -hmm. Got a little is nugget. that Stella's? Yes. Yeah, yes. we'll get that to Stella's. <laughs> <laughs> Damn dog gets his own steak. Ooh, boy. Wait a minute. Look at that right there, huh? And then. What we got here? Good God. Well, that's day one. First world <laughs> issues. We're overstocked on steak and bacon wrapped asparagus. <laughs> So I'm not going to lie, I've been a little bit concerned about the amount of power that this would draw just because it is a lot bigger and I only have the one battery, uh, but it's now been on all night uh, since yesterday when we got here and I'm still at 12.3 volts. Well, let's go check and make sure that it never turned off. And if I go right over here to min max, it looks like the max has been is 39 and the minimum was 5 degrees. So safe to say it hadn't cut off which is a good thing. Now, let's make some breakfast. I have noticed though, whenever the compressor comes on, it kicks it down to 11.6 back here. So, it's taking a good bit of juice to power that thing, nay. Camp cooking. Good morning, what's happening? It's Sir William and today we're at Pilot Mountain where they're gonna go hiking and I'm gonna go driving. Now, mom's all into CrossFit and I too am kind of into CrossFit as in, you know, I've crossed being fit off the list. So that's what we're doing today.
Look at how pretty that is, huh? Man. So crazy. I wonder what makes the pilot mountain just pop up out the ground. So I've been looking for a place to launch the drone. I found a place to launch the drone here at this little school I stopped at. Take a look at Pilot Mountain from the sky. Man, this thing is incredible. to actually use this as a navigation type uh, landmark so that's pretty cool we came up to downtown pilot mountain for a recommendation on a sandwich shop that was supposedly good for lunch and we have rolled in on a big ass car show, cruising thing, and a lot of badass cars. So let's go check them out. see every day old fixed up Dodge truck the adventurer what's this this life this right here cool thing yeah where are we even at right now Mayberry no is this Mayberry Mayberry is what one town over <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta go down away <laughs> Ooh, buddy all that hiking they did really wore me out. So we're back now, it's about 3.30. We're gonna be able to set up camp before dark. However, somebody had reserved the campsite we were in. So we're probably gonna end up right there because here's the deal. You can have two tents per site here, but only one tent pad. Only one tent pad and they've okay. effectively taken up this this entire space with just that one tent pad there and there's really no room over there too rocky. and over there's too rocky but you know what we slept in far worse places So here's the deal. It just would not be as easy to bring home cooking onto the trail without the help of some sort of portable refrigeration. 
Iceco's got you covered with all different sizes from a 40, a 45, a 50, as well as this 60 dual zone like the one that I have here. The Iceco VL60 in particular offers two really nice latches on both of the zones. And each zone, because it is a true dual zone, can actually work independently of one another. It's set up to be on the incline of around 30 degrees. It's got the Danfoss compressor in there. And with that being said, it's also got an extended warranty on the compressor itself. Ultimately, whenever you're looking at refrigeration, that's going to be the most important part. The easy to read display here allows you to change all the different settings as well. By hitting the mode button, you get to the temperature setting where you can adjust it up or down and it's easy to read. Hit the mode button again and one more time and you can change it from eco to max. Eco is of course going to save you the most amount of power. And this right here is the battery shutoff. You can do low, medium, or high. You'll have to refer to the owner's manual in order to find out what the actual setting is. But I want to say around 10 point something uh, volts it's going to cut off on that medium. As you can see right now at the actual unit it does have a readout for voltage and I'm at 11.2. Now, like I said earlier, a fridge is not a necessity. That being said, though, it definitely helps. Not having to deal with the cooler, not having to dump it, fill it back up, find ice at a gas station, find a gas station with ice, you get the idea. Just being able to set the groceries down in here, set the temperature and roll on down the road is awesome. I would definitely make portable refrigeration one of the number one luxury upgrades to make to any overlanding vehicle. If you're considering portable refrigeration for your Overland rig, make sure that you check out Iceco. They got a couple different sizes. They all have Dan Foss compressors. They all have five year compressor warranties. They're available on Amazon. They're available with your Prime membership. They're very reasonably priced. Plus, if you click the links below, you can help support the channel and I'd appreciate it a lot. Now back to the show. Fire, round two. So I posed a question on one of the Facebook groups that some of you guys might be familiar with. It's about 30,000 people in this group. I would imagine that of the 30,000 people that are in this group, not everybody was born expert. I posted a simple question, which is, when you're in established campgrounds like this, do you clean up the ashes whenever you're done? If so, where do you put them? I'm up to 25 comments. It's been less than 30 minutes. So the general consensus is no, you do not take the ashes with you. Um, some of the people say that you can bury the ashes or spread the ashes, or a lot of the people just say, make sure that you put it out or clean the trash out of it. But then you always have those assholes, right? You always have the assholes that have something smart to say. They were just born experts on whatever the topic is. And I've been seeing a lot of this on all kinds of different Facebook groups. And I really don't understand why. I don't understand why we cannot live by the general premise that if it won't hurt, might help, then say it. If it might hurt and won't help, keep it to yourself. Tonight we're having tacos and remember them steaks that we had yesterday? Well, we got a little bit left over. So, we'll throw them bad boys in there too. Wait till you see how this turns out. Some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which by the way, my favorite cut of meat, without a doubt. Get a little steak action on me. So here's the play on the tacos, right? One last final ingredient. Guero, or guero, however you want to say it. Just make sure that you get white corn tortillas. And if you're still using flour tortillas, I don't know what to tell you. You're probably still putting ketchup on your steak too. That's also a bad idea. I forgot, this is actually the last and final ingredient. Valentina. Chicken, steak, some onions, peppers, guacamole, sour cream, Valentina, mild cheddar, and wrapped up in a white corn tortilla. Oh. Okay, I lied. We're not just eating tacos. Check out them nachos, boy. Damn it, man. So today we're gonna make the journey back home to Columbia and actually it's only three hours away, which is kind of crazy because we're like 30 minutes away from Virginia state line. So we're at the northern tip of North Carolina and everywhere else in North Carolina takes like three and a half hours too. So I don't know, but anyway, that's the way that it works out. So we got a three hour drive ahead of us. I nearly forgot to show you guys what we're cooking up for breakfast because again, when you're camp cooking and you're camping with mom, we're always eating good, so check this out. This morning I'm making a cast iron skillet breakfast casserole. And the way that we're doing this is I've got diced potatoes. 
uh, from Walmart in the little bag. It's got some peppers and onions uh, mix that I also got already prepackaged from Walmart in the little fresh section. Then I've got some onion sausage that I got from my local store. You can use whatever kind of sausage you want in there. And then I've scrambled up four eggs and put some cheese in there. Yeah, it's legit and it's good and you'll love it. And it's extremely easy to cook. But that's not all because we had to go big. We got bacon and sausage too. You dig? All right, so while I was here, I decided to reach out to the folks on the USA on Dirt Facebook group, which if you're not a part of, go check it out. If you just look up groups, look up USA on Dirt. It's a place where we go and share stories and any kind of cool places that you've been and all that. Just go check it out. But anyway, I reached out looking for some spots around Pilot Mountain and I was told about the Yadkin Island Park. So we're going to go check that out. Supposedly there's three creek crossings that dead ends into the water or right into the river. So. So this is the road coming into the Yadkin Island State Park, or Yadkin, is it Yadkin Island Park? Is that what it's called? Yadkin Island Park, yeah. So this is the road coming into Yadkin Island Park, and that was three um, creek crossings, so we're done there. And it should dead into the river, which would be pretty cool, like if we packed up the kayaks and kind of came up here. I said I feel really bad for the dogs, and I've sat back here <laughs> just a wee bit through the road. There's railroad tracks down here. So this is pretty cool. You hike down along the railroad tracks there and you're kind of going right along the river. And this is it, like a little beach area on the river. You can see some folks out there. How cool is that? Definitely worth coming back and visiting. This is the Yadkin Island State Park or park or something like that. And I'm with the Yadkin River Keeper. Oh, sweet. And, okay. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is the failed canal project at Bean Shoals. In 1820, um, uh, a group of uh, men from Wilkesboro wanted to get the Yadkin River navigable from Wilkesboro to Salisbury. And so they were going to build a three mile canal, and they found out that at least two miles of it, they needed to build this wall. This wall started in 1820 and was completed in 1824, but they ran out of money. The canal was never completed. The canal was never used, and in about 1898, the uh, railroad company came in and laid the railroad bed on top of the canal. Never been uh, used. Uh, the failed canal project of Dean Scholes. If you keep going down that way, have you been down that way yet? We went oh. down f not too far, though. Oh, go down a way. The canal is up 12 feet high. Wow. wow. It's really cool. That's crazy. Yeah. That is really neat. So that's why the railroad, that's why the railroad runs right along yeah. there. Yeah, and then once the railroad came in, they didn't need the canal. Because right. You know. Boats weren't boats weren't a big deal then. Nope. <laughs> well, that's really cool. We appreciate yeah. the history yeah, lesson. Yeah. That's really cool to yeah. know. The other fun thing is. Okay. You asked. <laughs> ah. I don't know if you can see it from here. You see, there's kind of a V in the water. Yeah, I okay. do. That's a Native American fishware. 
anywhere from 500 to 800 years old. Wow! It's, it's uh, man-made. The Native Americans made these V's in the water, built out of uh, rocks. They would put the rocks in the river, a V. They'd put a net at the apex, and that's how they would catch fish. So they just draw them right into the net right yep. there. Yeah. Smart people. And there's five more from here to Donaha. Wow. That are pretty cool. But that one, that one is, uh, when the water's down like this, you can, it's, and you can see it pretty good. That is really cool. Well, hey, man, we really appreciate yeah, you telling sure. us about it. That, that'll teach you to ask. Yeah. <laughs> there's two put-in spots on this river. Apparently, you know, official put-in spots, although there's all kinds of spots like what we just got in with. And you can apparently put in at one of them and go for about three or four hours and again, take out. So you'll put in down there, you'll float on down here and take out. And it'll be about a three or four hour little journey by kayak or canoe, however you want to do it. Now that is the V that he was talking about. See the V? which is really neat. is that we got to fly over the river we got to go hike down the river we got to encounter some hood dogs <laughs> stella held her composure really cool even though yes she's a pit bull and we even met the river keeper who told us about the little canal project from the 1800s which was pretty neat all in all i've had a fun time me too what about you, babe? Me three. Stella? She's four. She's four. <laughs> hey, we really appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, make sure that you hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and future adventures. And until next time, peace!